Oof. <laughs> I mean, you know, why not? Why not, why not? Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, hmm. Camera looks like uh, top of my head is a little off. Well, now. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone, and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we had a really great turkey day, and I will say that um, I don't usually like the turkey, but my wife found this uh, recipe where we used uh, gochujang sauce as a glaze over a dry brined bird, and it was good, very good. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the Fujifilm X-T5 and what lenses are the best landscape lenses for it. And uh, after that, I'm going to talk a little bit about an extra lens I like to carry that uh, is a little bit, maybe, I don't think unorthodox is the right word, but different from what most people carry for landscape work. And before that, we will, uh, we're gonna watch a video of me heading out to another local trail, because I have so many good local trails. And uh, along the way, I, uh, I'm, I'm looking for uh, bracken fern going to their fall finery. You know how they turn that beautiful yellow and then brown. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll make a couple other photographs along the way. So let's go ahead and watch the video. And when we come back, I will uh, talk about those lenses. So I've headed out here to uh, a trail I really love. And I think finally the bracken fern are going to work with me. And we uh, may end up here with hmm, some photographs with some beautiful ferns in full color, as in fall color. And uh, yeah, so after I just saw a lady scream at her kid, <laughs> I'm uh, running off into the woods where it's quiet. I keep walking by all these amazing ferns that are like in beautiful yellows and browns with some green shooting through them. And I'm not finding anything that works next to it to build a composition on. Okay, so I was walking and I noticed this insane composition here with all of these crazy snaggled trees here. And I really, really, really like it. Um, so I went and got a shot of it. And I love the way the dappled light is hitting it. I love the just massive amounts of business happening. Um, I think it's pretty nice. Here, I'll show you what I got. All right, so that's that's what we're working with. And I think uh, I think having this bright light in the center, as you see in here in the middle, very middle, uh, with all the business around the outside, is actually working extremely well. We'll see how it looks in the studio, but I think this is going to be a good shot. So I basically came out today to just do a quick run around. I, I have no, nothing to teach you, no intention. We're just gonna make a couple photographs and uh, I'm, I'm gonna go home and have my uh, Oktoberfest meal tonight. I think Oktoberfest is, uh, today's the last day. So um, yeah, I bought brats and sauerkraut and rye bread and 
Spätzle and it's going to be fabulous. So, nom nom nom. One of the things I like shooting most about this time of the year is the greens are starting to go a little yellow, the leaves are starting to change, the ferns are going brown, but this afternoon light is just, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I really enjoy shooting with all these dappled spots all over everything because that can make for a really brilliant, interesting shot. Let's just walk around and see what we can find. So I don't know how much you can see of what I'm looking at and if you can even see me very clearly, but uh, these two boulders that are split off here, um, this whole area is glacial, uh, glacially formed. So these may have split off during the glaciation process, but it is, um, to me, I think it's absolutely beautiful the way they've come off. I had some dappled light on it earlier. I don't know if I'm gonna get that back, but I wanna see if I can make a photograph of this at least to just record it so I know that I want to come back and shoot it again. All right, let me shoot it before I lose the light entirely. I, uh, I didn't film this last shot I just took. There were like massive amounts of mosquitoes and I was keeping an eye on a snake. Not that I think he would have come out <clears throat> and attacked me. Snakes don't attack people that aren't messing with them. But I had to keep an eye on him anyway. And uh, I had a hell of a time with that composition. So I don't know if it even came out, but hey man, if it did, Here's my mushroom composition. If you enjoyed this content please i ask that you subscribe interesting fact is most people that watch the videos don't subscribe which is just weird so if you could subscribe give it the thumbs up fall in new england is just so beautiful and maine in particular where i live um i don't know if the color matches vermont vermont is just special as you may recall i did a video there a few years ago and it was just bananas. But look at all these ferns. Aren't they beautiful? Ah! So I stumbled on this. I think it's quite lovely. And the composition I set up for it is as follows. That's the shot I made. I like the composition, sort of a starburst composition with all these elements coming out of the center of the image. Yeah, I was glad to uh, get one more shot out of the day. Anyway, like I said, it's good to have you here. Thanks for dropping in. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up, but only if you found this useful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, man, that was, that was actually a really fun day. It was still warm. Um, it was back in October. And as you saw, I was able to wear shorts and that was fantastic because I like wearing shorts. 
Uh, it's now winter. Well, it's not winter. What am I saying? We're about halfway through fall, but when I moved to Maine, I knew it was cold. Er, I didn't realize it would get cold only halfway through fall, which I'm fine with. I actually really like it. I really hate snow blowing, but I'm also not going to hire somebody to destroy my driveway with a plow. So, all right. This is what we're here for today. And uh, I'm going to tell you what I think of the lenses I use, what lenses I use. And uh, yeah, we might look at a couple examples. And um, I was going to actually make a print off of this, but look, needless to say, it's, it's a 40 megapixel camera. It can make prints, you know, they're four by six feet without any problems. Um, but I will talk a little bit about the ins and outs of the weight of the camera um, and how small the whole system is and what the trade-offs are in that, in that process. I also uh, will compare some lenses. So I'll compare like my Nikon Z7 and it's 24 to 120 to the size of the 16 to 80, which is equivalent to the 24 to 120. But let's get started on what lenses I use first. Um, all right, for ultra wide, I tend to always turn to, I remember we're on the Fujifilm X-T5, I tend to always turn to the 10 to 24. And uh, this is a fantastic lens. It's an older lens. This is the water resistant version uh, because I shoot out in the rain a lot. Uh, it's an older lens. It does not resolve a full 40 megapixels, but that's not really that important. Um, you can you can work with that. And uh, image quality is excellent and it's light and small. And even though it's not truly internal focusing with a filter on it, all of your focusing takes place inside of the, the lens body, which is nice. Internal focusing would be where internal um, elements of the lens move inside the lens. This one is a pumper, as they call them. Pumper means moves in and out, so it can suck air in and out. But you can put a filter in front of the pumper part and, uh, you know, restrict the dust a little bit more even. All right, great lens. I've shot a lot of things with this. Like I said, it's equivalent focal range is 15 to 36. And maybe I didn't say that, but now I am. 15 to 36. Love this lens. Uh, let's see. Um, my favorite standard lens is going to be the 24 to 120 equivalent, which is the 16 to 80. Um, I'm very fond of this lens. It, uh, it, once again, doesn't resolve a full 40 megapixels, but it is really close enough. This is what I, where I keep going with this, that they are close enough. The 40 megapixel resolving, um, I don't think there's any Fuji lenses that actually, uh, in the X system, that actually fully resolve 40 megapixels. Um, but how important is it? We can talk about that some later, but let's just talk about these for now. So I really like this lens. Uh, this is the lens I take when I'm not taking any other lens. It gives you a nice wide angle field of view at 24 millimeters or 16 as it's called on here. I'm sorry, my brain works in 35 millimeter, which is full frame. So you're gonna hear me saying, the equivalent sizes in full frame. I'll try to stick to saying the size that's on these lenses, but it's a habit. So anyway, 16 to 80, favorite standard lens, f4 across the range. Oh, and by the way, the 15 to 24, or uh, I'm sorry, the 10 to 24 is also f4 across the range. I like that. Um, makes it easy if I want to shoot video, and it makes it easy if I want to shoot something at the maximum aperture of f4 and then want to zoom, I don't have to change my exposure. It's a plus. And then for long lenses, uh, I carry the uh, 70 to 300, which is equivalent in full frame terms of about 105 to uh, 400, I think. Yeah, that's right, 105 to 400. Um, excellent, excellent lens. This, I think, at some focal lengths will resolve 40 megapixels without a problem. Excellent lens though. Uh, there's a couple of focal lengths that are a little soft on it. I'm not that, I'm not that techy, so whatever. It does a great job, I love this lens. Um, now, as far as filters go that I carry with the system, 
I carry these KNF Concepts magnetic filters, and I really like these. Um, you saw in the Nikon video, oh no, I guess you didn't yet. Well, <laughs> that video hasn't come out yet. I had my Nikon go over in a windstorm uh, with some bad footing under the tripod and slammed the lens directly into a boulder, shattered the lens, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, shattered the UV filter. The lens was saved. This is that whole UV filter importance thing. Um, I don't, I try never to use a lens without a UV filter. It depends on the filter setup I'm using. Sometimes you have to put on an adapter, take off the UV filter, and then you can use other filters. But with this system, you actually have a magnetic UV filter that you can stick then all the other filters onto, which I like. All right, so it takes up very little space. So that's what I like so much about the Fujifilm system. It is small and light. So it's great for backpacking or that's the entire thing. So I can fit that into a very small bag. And as you just saw in the video, I was carrying this shoulder bag. And this is the Street Walker, City Walker 10. Street Walker. That would be a weird name for a bag, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, this is the uh, City Walker 10 from uh, Think Tank Photo. I love their bags. Um, and this is no exception. I've had this bag for years. I don't think they make this exact bag anymore, but they make something similar. Um, so if you need a shoulder bag, Think Tank makes some great ones. All right, so let's talk about why I like the Fuji system as a lightweight go-to when I'm out hiking, wanna move fast, or I'm backpacking and I have very little room, or even on the motorcycle, uh, have very little room for um, carrying a lot of gear. The Fuji system is small. It is, it's, it's much, much smaller than full frame. Um, so that is, that's the primary reason. The image quality now that we have 40 megapixels, since I do print big and I also like to crop sometimes, the files are beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, so the trade-off, uh, you lose a little bit of dynamic range. Okay, I'll, t I'll put that differently. You lose more than a little, but it's not so much that you can't work with it. Secondly, weight. I like how light it is. Uh, that is another contributing factor to why I like to take it backpacking or um, when I'm doing a fast hike, as you saw in the video. Now, uh, just a quick thing. I wanna do a fast comparison of sizes. This is the 70 to 300, which is equivalent to 100 to 400 or 105 to 400. And this is the Fuji version. This is the Nikon, 100 to 400. Um, I forget what the actual, uh, it is F4 to 5.6. This is the Nikon version that is a 4.5 to 5.6. Now, same apertures or very close to it. Um, same focal length, huge size difference. Now, that said, you can't beat the image quality on this 100 to 400. It's pretty much the best one on the market for any system. Um, it's a ridiculously good lens and will resolve, uh, I think, 100 megapixels. We're going to find out when I do the um, pixel shift test on the Nikon ZF. But this thing is ridiculously sharp and ridiculously fast focusing and just amazing in every way. You can use it for uh, wildlife photography also. This is pretty sharp, looks pretty good. I think it, like I said, resolves 40 megapixels and is a really nice lens. I've had very good results with this lens. Is it a wildlife lens? I'm gonna go with no. It's just not fast enough. Um, it's, it's not the fastest lens in the world, but it is fine for landscape photography or just general, you know, sports photography of your kids, what have you. It really depends also on what kind of, if you're switching over to wildlife, it depends on what kind of wildlife you are shooting. If you are shooting wildlife that doesn't move around a lot, it's fine. But is it is it sharp enough zoomed into the full 400 or equivalent 400? I don't think so. Not if you're gonna crop. Wildlife lens. Okay. Don't even know if I'm gonna use that because I might get really, really flamed for that. 
All right, we were talking about sizes. So now the next one is the 16 to 80, which is equivalent in full frame terms to 24 to 120. An icon version. Gives you an idea of size difference right there. Much bigger, much heavier. And as far as wide lenses go, there's not a huge difference actually between these two. This is the full frame F4. This is the um, crop sensor. Fujifilm F4. Image quality on this is much, much, much better than this. Regardless, um, these, this is kind of a wash. There's not a huge difference. And when this is actually extended for use, the Nikon version, at 14 millimeters, it is actually bigger. So, that's it. Enough of that nonsense. So, I think for getting away from comparisons for landscape photography. These are the lenses you need. They used to call them the Trinity and the original Trinity started out as, uh, shooting from right around 16 because 14 and 12 millimeter lenses didn't really exist back then. So it was like 16 or 17 millimeters up to 200. So you carried three lenses. One was a, I forget what the, full focal length, but I want to say it's 17 to 35 millimeter. And then you carried a 24 to 70 millimeter. And then you carried a 70 to 200 millimeter and your full range was 16 to 200. In today's terms with most camera systems, you're going to carry something that's 14 or 15 millimeters. If you're, if you're running light, cause you can get a 12 millimeter 2.8. That is huge. But if you're running at a normal lightweight landscape, uh, photography rig, if you're running that, you're going to go from about 14 or 15 millimeters up to 400 millimeters now. And what's, what's interesting is these, this is where it really changed a huge amount was at the long end. Um, tech, uh, the, uh, the lens formulations got better, things got sharper and they were able to get sharpness out of 400 as well as a hundred. So that's how we ended up at this 100 to 400 level of lens. So as far as those lenses go, um, I find, I find these lenses to be uh, absolutely fantastic. And so what is my secret lens that I carry? Well, you're going to laugh at this. I, I not laugh. Let me put this differently. You're going to find this amusing because it's not some insanely priced, ex super expensive lens. It is, where is it? I've got it here somewhere. Oh, there it is. It is. The Seven Artisans fisheye lens for Fuji. Uh, the Seven Artisans and the focal length on it is 7.5 and it's f2.8. Now check out this photo I took with this. This lens is astoundingly good. Um, not terribly hard to use. And at even at 2.8, if you focus three feet away from the lens or even two and a half feet away from the lens, all the way to infinity is going to be acceptably sharp. Um, and you put it at F4, everything's sharp, but you can use this to get some really interesting shots. Like the one I just showed you, that was literally me leaning back into a four foot deep, um, sort of alcove on the edge of the water, looking out with myself pinned against the wall. And it, the fish, I basically took everything that was around me and made it look like a cave. And I've used this a number of times in the woods, um, in, in places like the rocks to make a cave effect. And, uh, you know, anywhere else that as long as you can keep your horizon straight, you can actually make it look like it's not really fisheye. So I think this lens costs like 150 bucks. I'm not sure this I've been really pleased with. And, uh, eventually I'm actually going to do a video about budget landscape photography using these less expensive Chinese lenses that are all older designs. That about rounds up what I like to shoot with. These three lenses will, will set you up for pretty much anything you want to shoot. And uh, if you want to take something fun and something you can get legit, really good stuff with, you know, this, oh, come on. It's, it keeps finding my face. There we go. The Seven Artisans fisheye is an astoundingly good little piece of glass. 
So can't go wrong with it. Anyway, listen, I want to thank you for coming out. I, uh, I hope this was useful to you. And if you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. Um, please subscribe to the channel. I need subscribers. I need to build the channel. So do that if you find this useful. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Uh, we'll be, uh, we might be doing something more with the X-T5. Might be doing something with the Z7. Might be doing something with the ZF. Haven't decided yet. Oh, and by the way, this was shot on the ZF. This is the ZF you're watching right now. Um, I pumped it out to a Ninja 5 recorder um, because I wanted to just see how the HDMI output compared to what was in the camera. Um, I'm recording it LT instead of HQ ProRes. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. That was all nerdy stuff for you nerdy guys. All right. Thank you for coming. Hope to see you again next time. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Yeah.